This week, we're talking about cubby number 14, Symbol. What do we mean when we say symbol? We mean you got one thing being used to represent something else. In more detail, you have a larger idea condensed into a single thing. This thing symbolizes the larger idea in its totality. When you're creating symbols, there are a couple of different kinds. You've got visual symbols, auditory symbols, and action symbols. Visual symbols are visual. Something you see is not only an object in and of itself, it also represents something else. Commonly a tangible object represents an intangible idea. Perhaps the fancy piano in your story isn't just a musical instrument. It also represents wealth. The old school Mustang isn't just a car. It represents freedom for our main character. A teddy bear represents childhood. You get it. Auditory symbols use this same idea. They're just heard instead of seen. In the world video, we use the example of people saying, don't you worry, instead of you're welcome. Do you remember? What if your main character traveled to a far off land? He buys a beer, says thanks, and the bartender responds with, don't you worry. That spoken phrase is now being used as not only a world building linguistic quirk, but as a spoken symbol. To our main character, that familiar phrase represents home. Your auditory symbols don't have to be verbal. They can be any sound at all. A police siren is a clear example. It's just a particular noise, but it represents authority and the law. In your story, you could have a character whistling a specific tune every time they sneak up to murder someone. Very quickly, that tune comes to represent impending violence. Dread. Next up, we have action symbols. These are a bit more complicated. These are actions that are symbolic. Maybe our story is all about a large empire trying to successfully quell a rebellion. It's the massive, powerful system versus the oppressed minority. Then you might have a scene where a small, energetic fish is dropped into a tank with a much larger, much older fish. They struggle, and the big fish eats the little fish. The little fish represents the rebels, and the big fish represents the empire. The big one eating the little one represents the fight and the different levels of power at play. It's a very simplified action symbol, but you get the idea. When designing your story, you want to know what your symbols are going to be. What are you going to be weaving into your story in symbolic ways? Symbols should be used to express the different ideas from your different cubbies. That's why they're here, to layer in, either obviously or subtly, the different ideas of your story. That's it for symbol, for now. Next week, we're moving on to our last cubby, in our cubby unit of short-form storytelling. Cubby number 15! Moment!